What's going on, YouTube tribe? Welcome to a uh, little bit mad gaming. <laughs> Can't believe y'all. I said um like I didn't know what channel my channel was, but yes, welcome YouTube tribe to a little bit mad gaming, where I'm giving you a review for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Also, I'm, I'm gonna have some Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed gameplays later on today, but for right now. We're going to focus on this, but first day first is I can get everybody to hit that like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification button. Also, leave a comment down below what you thought of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, first episode called the New uh, called New World Order. Um, for those who are not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button. Become part of the tribe. Become part of the family because I'm the hottest, newest thing on YouTube or newest gaming channel on YouTube slash media slash review slash you know information channel where I could I'm gonna give you information about you know either a show wrestling whatever I love it all and I will tell you uh, for those who are subscribed and the new subscribers who became part of the tribe love you appreciate you thank you for taking your time um, to subscribe and, and trusting me with your entertainment. Um, yeah, just all I need you to do is just continue watching, liking, and sharing. Just share, 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 and everything is Gucci. I mean, what could I say? I just, I just enjoy the fact that you subscribe. But with all that being said, we're getting close to the goal of 100 subscribers. So those who are not subscribed, thank you for subscribing. Let's keep getting closer to that goal. Let's get to the 100 subscribers. But without further ado, here we go. You know what I like to do. I'm going to give you a uh, synopsis first, and then we're going to break it down. So, the first episode is called New World Order. And, it's, and it says, Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes realize that their futures are anything but normal. So, this, to, to set the stage, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, just like we probably all suspect, was going is basically in tone in tone infrastructure everything how they set up is way different than WandaVision. Where WandaVision had a goofy and uh, serious side, this is more this is just more this is more serious and dramatic, but what they do share in common is still the common fact the common thread between them two is that is a grief. It, it either grief of losing a loved one, grief for uh, you know for not being there for a loved one, grief for uh, for taking someone's loved one away, or you know the fact that the world is still basically in um, the world is basically still trying to put themselves back together, and we see that we still get to see just like in one division, you know even though. And get any of happened on yay, the heroes won, Braun got everybody back who was you know dusted and took away. We see that maybe that wasn't a good thing. You know, maybe because of the fact that it was five years later, you know, I think the fact that it was five years later, this became and this went from being a good thing to a bad thing. You know, because this it it, it sold in Walden Vision, but this really hit nailed it home that this is not really a good thing. But what I mean was, we see that for Sam, him coming back, you know, him coming back. I think this, I uh, think they said this was like, uh, this takes place like just like Wanda visit. This is like few a uh, few months later after. Um, this only it's only been a couple of months since Avengers Endgame. You know, for them, you know, for us, it's been you know almost a year or two. But you know, for them, this is only a couple of months later. And Sam comes to find out that you know it starts off with Sam are going on a mission to uh, to stop a kidnapping, and then you know it, it, he uh, he's successful in his mission to stop the kidnapping. But you know he had to stop the kidnapping before they get to a border because once they cross a certain once the kidnappers get to a certain jurisdiction, U.S. soldiers cannot enter that jurisdiction, and it seems that it seems you know all you know Sam. Trying to stop the kidnapping and trying to stop the terrorists and see things are bleak until 
um, until uh, Sam is able in time, you know, able to get his boosters or work in time to get to the plane, get the civilian before they cross it to the border. Uh, we are introduced to a new radical group. Um, I'm I'm sorry that I can't remember. It. I don't. I didn't write it down what their name was, but we introduced to a radical group. It's the group that we always been seeing in the truck and the trailer promos with the mask with the hands on it. But we got explain in the so we get we, we get an explanation to why or to what their what that group is. And this might be a group of enhanced people. I wanna say yeah, they, I think they're like super enhanced people. But uh basically the group's mo motif as it will, you know, is that they are they are the people who actually liked what happened, you know, who who are who are on Thanos side per se, not you know, not they just pure evil and wanting to kill half the universe, but they like the status quo of the universe. How once that happened, the uh, the Earth became went from being divided by, you know, anger, race, gender, you know, bipartisans and, you know, hatred and all that type of stuff. You know, nobody had a different opinion about each other. The uni the earth became unified and it was together. You know, every culture, everybody who was left was together. And once the Avengers, we see that this group was spurred because the Avengers brought everybody who was dusted back, and now they. I guess this group is like now with everybody back, we're just going to go back to normal, being you know separated. You know, people hating each other, people hating each other for their different beliefs and you know past and life. You know, whether they, whether they you know went one way or the other. Now that you know, they hate that. You know, that's. They hate that, so we introduced it to this group. That was they. That's their. Uh, Sam is, uh, is told that that is their mission. That is their goal is to basically re uh, undo the effects of the blip and keep the world unified. I guess they 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 call themselves like a radical group. They not they not trying to be evil. They just wanna they just wanna keep the world how it was, even though. The people came back. They want the, the they want the world to be unified instead of split again. We also see that the dark side of the uh, the uh, snap and the blip, you know, and them bringing people back was that people, I guess, the, it didn't fix the world. It just made it more broken. Because now we we are seeing that from you know the Falcon and Winter Soldier's eyes now. Things are still, um, things are still basically not okay. The world is broken now. The world is like, <clears throat> it's hard to try to explain. I guess the world is like, is looking for not just a Captain America, but they're looking for somebody to attach themselves to to help them steer them back to normality because they don't know what to do now. The world is still broken. They don't know how to be lives and chains now because you know people have moved on. You know the blip is because now just because people are back, it's messing up the lives that these people try to create after the people left. You now we even see that for Sam. You know Sam finds out that after five being gone for five years and come and came back, he found that his um sister is selling their family's business, which is uh, they had like a boat fishing boat business, and they found his found out from his sister that they trying to, you know. They're trying to actually, uh, she's trying to gain some type of money from it by selling it. But Sam doesn't want it to be sold because, you know, the effects of him being gone for five years is hitting him. We we end up seeing, um, we seen that throughout the show before I get into that. We also get to a moment where um, we see what Sam ends up doing with the shield. And Sam ends up basically... He he ends up donating the shield to the uh, to this museum for Captain America. I think they I think I read it was in the, like the Smith the Smithsonian, and they had like a little they had a uh, display for Captain America, and it showed that uh, he 
the weight of having that shield was weighing on him because he didn't want he he felt he felt like it still didn't belong to him. We got a surprise um cameo from Don Cheeto, War Machine, and you know he and he you know he told Sam after the whole press conference to walk with him after he basically uh, said that the shield didn't belong to him, it belonged to Captain America. And always belonged to him, and he donated and he gave the shit all to the curator to put into the um to be put into the display for Captain America. So and then you, that surprise came out for Don Cheeto. Don Cheeto would tell would walk and was like, "What are you doing, Sam? You know why uh why would you uh why would you uh do that? You know why would you give it away when Cap gave it to you and he trusted you? We thought you was gonna take up the mantle and hold that shield." But he, you know, he 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 reiterated what he said. The cap once once old cap came back at the end of the game. He told when cap he said when cap gave me that shield, I told him it felt like it belonged to somebody else. And he told me and he told me it didn't that it, that it doesn't. But I still always felt that it belonged to somebody else, and I really do feel like it did belong to somebody else. And right now he just want to focus on being Falcon. He didn't want to be, uh, because he felt he felt like it was too much weight on him, and he wouldn't do it justice to be the next Captain America. You know, they the world's looking for the next Captain America, and they think he's going to be it. But he said, "No, I'm not going to." And he just he said he tells uh, uh, Rhodes, you know, that's why I did it because it still to me feels like this belonged to somebody else. It didn't feel like it belonged to. Me just felt like it belonged to Cap. You know he looks and but he looks with uh, sadness upon the fact that you know Cap would be sad that he didn't take up the shield. But he know he in his mind he think he did the right thing. So then we see from Sam's side he's trying to piece back together his family. Now he's he even tells uh, Rose how before he left his kids were uh his the, his uh, niece, his uh, nephews. His sister's kids were just, you know, babies, toddlers. They wasn't even, you know, they they was barely like five. And he said he come five years later. Now he said he comes back, and now my uh, my nephews are small men. You know, they they um, they like basically teen preteens now. And um, you know, he just was like, you know, I can't believe it. You know, there it's just so much I'm trying to catch up on. So much he trying to he's trying to get caught up on and you see that for his part from the, uh, his part of the movie he's basically um you know, this movie of the show he's trying to put together back what he's lost and where he found that he found that his sister in an attempt to save the the family business her the sister took out loans and stuff for the house and everything else just to feed money into the business but she's tired you know she's been fighting since the blip you know she even brings up how Sam wasn't here because of the blip and that you know and she he doesn't know what she had to go through in the five years she was she was here with her kids and she had to survive you know she it it wasn't you know he wasn't here to help her. And she's been on her own. She and she said, and uh, even when he offered the help, she's like, "No, we we all agree that you're out there, you know, being a superhero, or whatever." And I'm doing, and I'm here doing the normal stuff, keeping the family business afloat. That's what we agree. That's what dad, me, us agree with dad and mom and all that. And um, but Sam, you know, insisted. He he persistently insisted that she let him help him. She let him help her, and she finally caved. It was like, all right, fine. You think this is going to work? We'll give it a shot. And they go to the bank. They go to the bank and basically try to get a loan using Santa, using Sam's credentials. And it's just that he's a part of the U He's not just an adventurer, but he's also part of the U.S. Army. They try to get, the, and they try to get you know, Credential. They try to get it along and stuff, which should have worked because of his army breakup. But they said because he's been gone because of the blip and the fact that he's been gone for five years, 
he has no like basic he has no he having no work history for five years because he was gone and even if they would even if they would to exclude that and still try to get him the loan, they said there's nothing they could do because of the fact that the rules have changed for the um because of people who who's who was disappeared and brought back. So now there's new rules even for bank loans and stuff because of the blip and it prevents them from getting the loan. You know it. You know they and they are devastated. Sam and his sister are devastated that he that he are he's basically being punished for being part of the uh, people that disappear because he can't get along because he's been gone for five years. He can't. He, he basically there's no money to put into the business, so it's like it's a struggle right now. And I like how they they get a little twist on it. instead of them can't get along because they're African American. They can't get along because of the fact that he's a superhero. And it's a super a superhero that's been that was basically dusted for five years, and that the and that the world still messed up from that, and now there are new bank rules because of that. Uh, switching over to Bucky's uh, side, we see what he's been struggling with. Bucky's uh, still having nightmares about the people he killed. In this particular episode, we see that as the Winter Soldier. He 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 went into an accounting firm and killed one of his targets, but an a, a Asian uh, bystander who uh, uh, who looked like who was just an intern or not an intern was just a starting out. He was either an intern or he was just like like his first or second day on the job. <clears throat> he know Bucky as the when the soldier noticed that. He was sitting there and he witnessed him kill kill his target. So you know the the guy is trying to plead with him. You know he's begging the Winter Soldier not to kill him because he didn't see anything. But you know Bucky, as the Winter Soldier, knows that um, that he's that he's lying. That he knows that he saw everything. So he did. He don't need witnesses. So he ended up killing the guy. This will play later on into the show once I get to it. But. And then Bucky is basically now living life. He's got to go to therapy for uh for basically like I guess you could say PTSD like army veterans and he still he suffered from PTSD. He explained that because he knows he's suffering from PTSD because he was in a war PTSD. He was in a war because he went from one. He said he just been going from one war to another, and he never had time to process what he's going through, and it makes it hard for him to uh, to be the Bucky of old, to be more human and have more emotions. It made him jaded to the world because he went from one war being captured and frozen, and you know frozen, kept suspended just like Cat was, to be in mind control by Hydra, and then freed. And then he said he only had like a solace, a moment of peace on Wakanda until the next war came, which was, you know, Thanos. So it's like he he said he just based, he's been thrust from one war to another to another and never had time to process it. So, of course, he's going to suffer from PTSD and have nightmares and stuff. But we in, but he's trying to deal with it by finding the people by finding people on his list that he wronged and making rights with, you know, he and as part we see that part of the part uh, pardon rules for Bucky, he cannot he can't kill or harm he can't kill or harm or do anything of the sorts of people that's instructed to uh by the US government. So we see him that he went and helped the US government find it on hitting uh hitting uh Hydra agent, but he did it not lethally. He just Basically sucked him up and scared him a little bit with uh, hijacking the car, and he basically went and apologized to the lady and said, "I am no longer the Winter Soldier. I am Bucky Barnes, and I'm here to make amends and peace with you, and also take you know also send you to jail for being a a, a, a Hydra uh, sleeper agent." <laughs> but um, then we introduced it to a uh, to a, a old man, an old Japanese man, a neighbor of Bucky's, who. It's in they they always go and have dinner at this uh, uh, Asian restaurant every day at the exact same time, even to the point where the uh, where the bartender of the uh, restaurant she's she's even basically she knows Bucky and the guy, and the old Japanese guy and um, 
and you know the old Japanese guy almost like a father figure. He he she he knows that the uh, that the girl at the bar wants to go on a date with Bucky, but Bucky won't uh, ask her. So it's like they was doing this little dance. But he's like, you know, you know, I'm an old man. Well, let's get to the point. So he basically sets it up himself, and she, and he's like, you know, I'm sorry for him. Don't pay him no money. She's like, no, what, what, what's need to be sorry for? I'm game. And she basically, you know, accepts the invitation. She wants to go on a date with him. So Bucky's like, sure. And now, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. So you know, Bucky's trying to be human, and um. But then we see we get a moment where the father sees a, a particular type of food, Asian food, and then he goes into this sorrow trance. And Bucky's like, "What's wrong?" And he's like, "My son used to love these. You know, what, uh, it breaks my heart to know that my son was killed and basically blah blah and you know stuff like that." But what he said what hurts him the most is that not understanding why he was killed. Because he said the police just told him that he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. But he always he said he always felt in his heart of hearts that it wasn't it, that wasn't the case. And then you get Bucky who basically sitting there with guilt written all over his face because he realized, yeah, we finally we figure out who that who that kid he killed. That innocent Asian kid bystander was that guy, was that old man's son. And we see that it's a reason why he's being nice to this old guy. Cause he's the guy, on, he's the uh, man on the list. He's a, a name on the list that he's trying to make amends with because he, cause he knows he killed this man's son. And that's a that's a guilt that would be used against Bucky throughout the uh, throughout the episode. I know I kind of talk, uh, kind of said a lot but I don't wanna keep going into it but he ended up going on a date and you know things go something somewhat as expected because of his guilt. Um and we see we see it where Bucky's dealing with he's did on his side he's mostly dealing with the guilt and memories of the fact that he remembers everybody that he's killed. Going back to Sam, you know, Sam ends up um Sam's still trying to Fix things. He's still trying to bring things together. You know, he gets into an argument with his sister. You know, she's like, "What is you trying to prove? What, what, is, your, what, is, what is your part? What is you trying to prove? Why does this mean so much to you?" And we see that you know it's basically because he's been gone for five years and things has changed. And he, you know, we figure out, we find out that even for both Bucky and um, um, for both Bucky and Sam, them being gone for five years and back now to see that things have changed and. They try to cope with this new world. We see that you know it's hard on all of them, and that it's not just hard for the world that was still there, you know, that survived the blip. It's hard for the people who who was in, who who came back from the blip, you know, who was with the blip, who who was part of the blip and came back. On both sides, we find out that it's hard on both sides now, because one side is trying to reintegrate back into society. And, you know, other side, it's like, you know, we've been, we had, like, for five years, we had this this norm. Now we're trying to get back to the, the old norm because now all y'all are back again. And then we end up finding out, we end up getting, uh, again, another, um, another character introduction in this episode. I won't say who it is, you know, but it's a particular agent of a particular you know, English speaking country, you know, but we end up getting a, a, little, a good cliffhanger at the end that signifies what things to come. And that just say it has something to do with a portrayal of sound, like sound giving the shield to the thing, but then they end up do they not, they didn't just want the shield for the museum, they end up giving the shield to someone. And that was like the big, that's like the big. That's only a, a small tidbit. Like that's not really what the, the cliffhanger was. I mean, per se, but it is part of it. But as part of the cliffhanger, you know, his sister's like, "Oh my God, you got to see this," and you know, we get this big reveal at the end. Um, yeah, it's a good show, man. I recommend y'all go. You guys go check it out. Um, Ten big ups. You know, I had no problem with it. It was a it was a great introduction to the uh, to the Winter Soldier, and I recommend you go check it out. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. You know.
Y'all can do me a favor and hit that, hit this button right here for more of my reviews. Hit that to subscribe or hit any one of these for my great content. Welcome to the tribe or those who are not at the, uh, on the tribe. Subscribe and become part of the tribe. Till the next one. Peace.